We've all had a dream, something you aspire to achieve. For artists, that means to be a master of your craft, whether it be character design, illustration, or animations. You want the freedom to express yourself and to do it well. One of my first art classes, Visual Storytelling, we were asked to create a one-page collage of characters that we wish we created. I stuffed in all my favorites at the time. Luffy and his crew from One Piece, Lelouch from Code Geass, Mashiro and Takagi from Bakuma. This is my dream, to be good enough to create these characters. I imagine your dream is quite similar, but right now you're here, trying to figure out how to get there. Maybe drawing a few sketches here and there in the hopes that you finally figure it all out. And each time it doesn't click, or you fail to even show up and draw, your dream gets a little bit farther away. It feels a little more out of reach, until you try to convince yourself you never really wanted it in the first place. Today I want to talk to you about your dream, your dream to become an artist because it doesn't have to be this way. You can be the one who makes it. And all it really requires from you is to answer one simple question. What do you want to draw? I'm gonna share something with you that I am deeply ashamed of doing and I still did very recently. I call it the pre-project. Last year I started a project to help me learn anatomy using the characters from Bleach. Since my goal was to learn the figure, I wanted the characters to have as little clothes as possible, so I thought a bedtime or getting ready for bed routine would be a good theme. Now, the thing that excites me most about Bleach is the Aaron cars. Aizen going full evil mode, Kubo is really improving at his artwork and his designs, all those evil characters. Grimjaw especially is one of my favorite character designs. They're really simple simple but very very cool. But instead of choosing those characters in that particular arc of Bleach to make a project around, I chose something way different. My setting was before the manga even started, before these characters even met, because I didn't think that I was good enough to work on what I was most passionate about. In reality, we just need to draw the things we're most interested in, even if we suck, right now. But you don't do that, and neither did I. You study, you copy, you do everything around the thing that you really want to do because you're afraid. Those uncomfortable feelings lead you to procrastinate or create a pre-project that leaves you feeling more discouraged than inspired. It took me a little time to understand what I had done wrong with the Bleach Project, and I saw in my history that I had done it many times before. I always get really interested in something, I create a story and really cool ideas for illustrations, but then somewhere along the way I start to switch gears. Without noticing, I start creating a pre-project that I have to do to get to the level I need to be at to do the thing I originally wanted to do. It's almost like the first idea becomes too precious to touch, and if you're not careful you can end in this endless loop of the pre-project becoming so good that now that needs its own pre-project. A pre-pre-project. <laughs> When I noticed this, I realized that I was asking myself really the wrong question to help myself move forward. But before we get into that, I do want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this episode. We're here talking about skills we want to focus on and things we want to learn. And one of the things I'm trying to improve on outside of my art is writing. I want to tell better stories for my characters when I design them, but also so that I can communicate better with you. If you don't know, Skillshare is a platform for creatives to learn and grow their skills covering a wide range of topics like design, music, and marketing. And Skillshare just launched a new thing called Learning Paths, a curated list of classes to give you more direction towards your goals. I'm always discovering new awesome classes on here, and I found one for writing through these learning paths. I got to put some of what I learned into writing this episode today, so I hope you're enjoying it so far. And if you want to start your learning journey today, the first 500 people to use my link in the description will get a free one month trial of Skillshare. So check it out and expand your learning possibilities. Now let's get back to the art. I created that project because I'm always asking myself, what's the best way to study? I've literally spent days not drawing 
trying to figure out and look at other people's artwork, what the best way would be to study and move forward. All that time and planning, thinking about what I should do, could have been spent taking a chance on a drawing or two. Kids excel at this. I watched a TED talk of Ken Robinson, an international advisor on education and the arts, who told a story about this young six-year-old girl in a drawing lesson. This teacher said this girl never paid attention to anything in class, but she paid attention to this drawing lesson. So the teacher went over to this girl and asked her, what are you drawing? And the girl said, I'm drawing a picture of God. And the teacher said, but nobody knows what God looks like. And the girl said, they will in a minute. Kids will take a chance, even if they don't know the answer. They're not afraid to be wrong. They wouldn't ask themselves, what's the best way to study? They would just ask themselves, what do I want to draw? And that's what you need to ask yourself. There are science-backed ways of how to improve more efficiently. But at the end of the day, it's not about that. Because if that's all you care about, you're going to remove all the fun and excitement from the equation. Creativity is not a science. Science can be creative, but it doesn't work quite well the other way around. All you should be asking is what do I want to draw? If you can answer that question, then do it. Give it a try, just like if you were a kid. And when you fail at it, if you fail at it, now you know what you need to learn in order to get better. You study that, and see what you can do better next time. And if you can't answer the question, what do I want to draw? First thing you do is find inspiration. Look at other artists, go out into nature, watch a movie, something will spark. And then again, you give it a go, give it a try, just as if you were a kid. And if you get it wrong, you know exactly what to study to make it a little bit better the next time. It's surprising how much time I spent anguishing over every detail of how I move forward as an artist, when in reality it's quite simple. I think it's a reminder I'm going to keep very close from now on. Instead of deliberating over each step of your art journey, you just need to follow your dreams. Tell me what you want to draw right now in the comments below, even if you don't want to draw it immediately at this second. I want you to write it out so you can return to this comment so you knew exactly what you wanted to draw and you don't try to avoid it. And before you try to draw something else because you feel like you're not good enough, just try it. It's scary, I know. The first one is always the worst, but if you can do just one, you'll know you have the strength to always try.